to see people making it up. And partly it's making the connection between the fact that our lives are improvised. You know, I mean, it's a very unusual person who gets up in the morning and everything is regulated. Maybe they're in the army or something. But even then, just to speak, you know, is just a grunt when you're in the shower. It begins to touch upon our necessity for improvising skills in being. So, you know, this this music makes a, a connect in a way between that aspect of life, but it goes against everything that is valued in society. Well, I think I think it's also an expression of, of the paradigm shift we're currently in in our society. You know, we come we've come from highly organised hierarchical industrial societies now transforming into networks where yeah. the old you know the old control mechanisms don't work anymore yes which is closer to improvisation and you, you know that's one of the reasons why we're sort of trying this whole exercise is because you know improvisation may be part of the solution not of the problem yeah I, I mean, agree. I'm curious how to as to how you guys see that Marcel and Tom yeah. well I would like to add something that that, that we shouldn't turn uh, improvisation into some kind of idealistic idea of only dealing with insecurity and complete freedom. I mean, every improvisation, also what is called free improvisation, starts from agreements on what to do, uh, starts from certain boundaries. You're not allowed to do anything you want. So every improvisation simultaneously contains Rules. many stable elements. Hmm. Yeah. We, talk, we talk a lot, of, uh, when I'm teaching, we talk a lot about the taboos and the, the hidden rules of improvising. You know, and part of the process is, is a process of exposing those rules in a sense that uh, what you're not supposed to do. And of course, if you take away all the rules, then you have a chaos for a while. But that's interesting too, because then you... You work through that and you find something which is, uh, you know, I mean, that's a huge learning process for people to go through, to go through the discomfort maybe of that chaos, uh, which is artic articulated through sound, and then to get through to the other side. I think that there's a kind of, well, at least in, in my opinion, there's a kind of paradoxical situation with uh, improvisation. On the one hand, you could say that every music making contains elements of improvisation mm. also playing like a fully scored uh, repertoire also you have to make decisions more or less on the spot and on the other hand, on the other hand uh, improvisation perhaps doesn't exist because you're I mean also through the rehearsing and, 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 and by building up experiences actually the, the, the area of getting to this place of unexpectedness becomes smaller and smaller in a certain, certain sense. Mm. I'm curious to what you think of this, Don. You, you're, you're an expert in human resources management, like, you know, <coughs> like we can manage you know, the resources called humans. Um, but you know, your, your context is often companies and organizations <coughs> that need to get stuff done. Um, well, I'm not sure about the human resources management. I don't like management, and um, since we uh, traded in humans for human resources, well, it has become an, a subject for economics, and that is not not really an improvement, at least not for humans. Um, and uh, no, I was thinking about about this improvisation thing and economics, uh, because a lot of these financial traders, of course, they have construed products and they have been improvising to construe more profitable products and then all of a sudden all of them turn to, out to be toxic. <laughs> I think that if um, uh, economics would be, uh, you might say, an improvising endeavor, um, well then it would have to allow for what, what um, um, one former trader, Nick, Nicholas uh, uh, Nassim Taleb, called black swans, which really is uh, allowing in all of your calculations and all of your products the possibility that some black swan, some extremely unlikely uh, event is going to happen. Um, and if you don't do that, and in none of these products 
um, such an event was foreseen. All, uh, each and every one of them could go wrong, but not all at the same time. And I would think that is, that is one, one serious defect in economics as we know it, because if you would look at, well, let's say evolution, to take the grandest subject of all, um, uh, evolution uh, uh, in itself, for example, the, the, the fact that um, human life exists is an extremely, extremely, extremely improbable occurrence. It occurred. But it defeated all laws of probability and of um, uh, uh, likelihood. Yet it emerged that we have um, uh, uh, evolution um, uh, in, in the shape we know it uh, is an extreme, extremely uh, improbable uh, uh, event. Moreover, evolution is uh, not uh, some thrifty experience where, for example, again, along, along the lines of, of, um, uh, of economics, uh, only the most uh, efficient uh, solutions survive. Uh, in fact, um, uh, evolution is not thrifty at all. It spoils large amounts of possible permutations that could have occurred in other environments that uh, at, at one time or another simply didn't exist. And uh, this idea of evolution, which of course is quite simply the, the idea of evolution that Richard Dawkins uh, uh, expounded, um, once again um, uh, warns <coughs> us that, uh, 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 that we should always try and reckon with the most improbable occurrences. And that, that was what I meant when I said economics is not an improvising science. You have to allow for the improbable. And that means that improvisation, if it is improvisation, always strikes, try, uh, tries to take in the possible occurrence of the, uh, of the improbable. Therefore, it is not planned. It is not the, uh, your usual idea of, of, uh, of, of control. Indeed, it may have forms of control that are ritualistic because you can't allow everything at the same time. But that is, that's a different affair. Mm. Yeah, I, was, I was talking to, to uh, Kees Dorst, who's a, who's a friend of mine and also a professor. Of So that's, that's the idea behind this event. And th these events have now spread to multiple cities. We've done it once in Amsterdam at Stein before. Um, but they've done it all over the world. It's been in Portugal and um, Minneapolis and Canada and uh, Austin, Texas, and all these other places. So we're really pleased to get to do it here with all of you. Now, the difference is this gets a little bit unorthodox. Sometimes when we do these handmade music events, we're in a, a club or at a bar or something. Here we are in, in this lovely theater, so all of you are now sitting down. What we're going to try to do is give you a few minutes to come out of your seats and go around and, and look at these projects a little bit and, and see these folks up close. And we're going to let you sit back down, and uh, then they're each going to play for us a little bit so that we can hear them one at a time. So for a few minutes now, um, our artists will, in a moment, start making noises, and you can go and see what they're doing. And then, so that we can hear each of the instruments individually instead of all simultaneously in a giant cacophony, we'll stop and let them do some short performances and show us what they're doing. So one very important announcement. Please, let's not only silence your cell phones, but since cell phones make this fantastic uh, radio noise, the that thing, imagine that you're on an airplane, a very large rectangular airplane. Uh, if you can turn off your phone, that's even better, because then we don't get that interference. We have wireless microphones and speakers and, and, and sketchy-looking electronics in a good way. So I'll let, uh, I'll let these folks um, make, start making some noises, and we'll have about 15 minutes to kind of come around and see what they're doing. And then um, I'll let you know when it's time to return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts and prepare for music.
the notion of starting these events. Yes. Okay, so everybody who has a seat should be seated. Okay. And we'll let in some additional people. There's two seats over there. There's two here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Part of something kind of spectacular has happened, um, and it, it's something that, that really owes its legacy to Stein in particular as a place where, as a, as a laboratory that's, that's open in some sense. You know, what, I, what was always impressed me about Stein is this sort of spirit of this place as somewhere that people can come and are free to kind of try out ideas and to play. And I, I don't know of any research center anywhere that, that has the sort of intensity of attitude that, that Stein does about that. Just this, this kind of magical thing that happens where people come into the facility and have some crazy idea and, and just explore and come out with something kind of amazing at the end. What has happened through the internet is that some of that idea, fueled by the knowledge that was developed at Stein and other similar sort of facilities around the world, has begun to disseminate to all these other people so that that spirit of experimentation and, and invention, being able to say, you know, I, I want to find some mode of expression musically that matters to me, so I'm going to invent it. This, this is spread. And what has happened with the, this sort of series of events that we've been doing and lots of other kind of similar events that people have planned spontaneously, is that you see people beginning to, to share how, uh, all of their skills and, and, and what they do with other folks and people who maybe haven't tried electronics before or don't consider themselves musicians. So there's a uh, sort of explosion of communication between those of us who have become addicted to this world of sound and electronic sound and, and everybody else. So part of what we'll get to see is, is a whole range of ideas about how to take these musical ideas and, and put them into, into action. And we have kind of the whole gamut of, of how, you might, how you might do that. Some ideas that are, are old, some ideas that have, have come from a, a tradition of instrument building, a tradition of electronic instrument building, which is now old enough that you can say that it's a tradition. And some are very personal and idiosyncratic and, and unique to the people here. But uh, I'll stop talking. Those of you who just joined us, please turn off your cell phones so that we don't, now that we have only one instrument playing at a time, so that we don't have cell phone interference. And um, I, I, you want to introduce yourself? Tell us what we're about to see. I'm Claudia Robles, and I'm working with, the, I'm with my, in fact, it's better not to talk at okay. this moment, that I'm really two channels of my brain activity, and with these channels I will trigger and I won't make you say anything else. <laughs> I'll just let you play. All right.
Yeah. But I, I try and I can come uh, from uh, from the calm to the stress, I can do that, but not uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the significance of the text? Of the text, okay. Uh, so the text because it helps me to 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 have an uh, to contact different mental states, different spaces. So said uh, the the, uh, the text is about the space, it's a calm space or a really a chaotic space that helps me to go in this emotional state. But as I say, really, ten minutes is not really enough for that. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, nor so normally when artists want more time, it's because they have some sort of, you know, aesthetic vision or they just think they can't condense it. And in your case, you actually have, you need that time to kind of focus your mind on these, mm -hmm. on these different states. So, yeah. so, yeah, you need situation. And then the software that, that you're working with here is it's Maximus P. Yeah, that, okay, the interface is, uh, it, it was built with an open EEG interface with a micro, uh, Arduino microcontroller. And then the, the voltages are, there is a program between the, the interface and the maximum speed and vita. Yeah, there is a processing program uh, which reads the voltages of the two brain, two chains of my brain and, and make a, a EFT uh, process. And then I receive the, all the values in the maximum speed. And with these values, uh, I change, I trigger and scale some video and sound effects. Okay. So it's really brain as control voltage input. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, because I'll ask everybody else, but tell us where you're from. So we've actually gathered people from different places. Okay. I'm from Colombia, but I live in Germany. I live in Cologne. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this piece was um, I did during an artist on residence in the, at the school in the, in Germany and uh, the Center for Media Art in Germany and and Cologne. Okay. Well, thank you so okay. much. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to stroll over here, and Roberta gave us a great. I don't know if you guys want to make some sounds first or talk first, but she did give us a great uh, segue, which is Arduino sensor over here, and here we have the Standuino platform which is Arduino based, right? Um, so you want to... I didn't think about my staging sort of chart. Okay. All right, uh, we came from Czech, from Brno. We are not all of Czech. And we bring this Arduino platform, which is like Arduino based, but we, it's like more complex. This uh, project, which is focused more on some kind of social context of Central Europe. Like, uh, we have like different, probably different history and different uh, like pioneers who had made a lot of work in electronics and this, this stuff, but nobody knows them and we are trying to continue. But uh, like in this case, we have to like map this history and also like make this documentation about their work and uh, we also know that uh, like times changed and you don't have to be engineer to make these things. So we made this project as a living monument to these pioneers. And we chose one of them, Santa Philip. And so we start uh, already to like map uh, and document these instruments. But uh, this uh, Standuino it's uh, just bored uh, with a lot of empty space. And we can build some like uh, some applications on that. We are artists. We are not like scientists, nothing like this. And we use it in the case of our like installations and interactive stuff. But uh, we are we are also musicians, so we decide to uh, like build, build instruments on this board. So we bring four instruments. It's prototypes. It's uh, like drum synthesizer analog and sampler, synthesizer, and uh, MIDI sequencer, which can like drive all these instruments, but uh, probably I burned the chips uh, <laughs> these instruments, so for sure we can play for the samplers, and I will see if I can like, repair it so quickly. I have the, like, new chips and everything, so then maybe after performance I can show you also these instruments. 
Uh, you were I, burning the firmware right before yeah, today. Yeah, no, no, no. Like because so. just, just for staying. It's All right, our very nice for this event. <laughs> so new, you haven't even tried it out yet. Maybe. For sure, for yeah, we sure. try all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all the same, you know, like you have to, in, when you need something working, you can do some mistakes. Yeah. Well, it's but uh, this project is more focused on some kind of education, so we are doing workshops. With this. <laughs> like uh, we are starting uh, like before summer and traveling around like, Czech and also other countries and make workshops for students of like high schools and also like universities. So, for example, like um, this lady, she is a composer uh, studying in, here in Haag, and she built her sampler on our workshop, and we decided to invite her because she can play well. And uh, we like, found something like Stanwino Orchestra, and uh, everybody who built this instrument or, or who has this instrument is part of this orchestra, so we are trying to like, play uh, some concerts, some performance around, around like this middle European like, center. Like, we are based in Brno, and it's in the middle of this mess. Of this mess yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we are trying to do like this kind of education, like uh, to learn, learn these people that it's not so important to have like in, like expensive instruments to be a musician, and also like you don't have you don't need school for to be a musician. You know? And it uh, it works. For example, we made like workshop on one high school, and uh, this evening on some like open up, opening of exhibition that I performed and they found a like, band which is named like Soderic Irons and <laughs> uh, they were invited for some like noises noise festival like international festival because somebody found them on YouTube <laughs> so it's working because this, uh, this like, yeah, young people are now traveling with their band and they didn't know they are like musicians before <laughs> <laughs> shall we hear them? Yes, for sure you can hear some parts, <laughs> and we'll try and uh, something more. <laughs>
Can you, what is circuit then to you? I'm trying, I try to find what is, what is circuit branding, and I think it's almost open, and you know, try to catch something and open and change the points and the, uh, because the, have lots of variations in the forms and the things, but the, the base is almost open and try with the fingers and it's almost like it's both for the try and put the fingers inside and, and the things go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Uh, and you're still doing how many music events in Portugal too, right? Those yeah. still happening? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I, mean, yeah. It's good. I think it maybe it's a nice thing <laughs> <laughs> for chair. Yeah, yeah. No, it was great to get to share it with you and, and uh, these folks brought me up to Portugal, which was great. Mm-hmm. Great to see you again. Thanks so much. So now we're going to go something a little different behind me, which is this beautiful lamp. Which is kind of, I would say, both sculpture and this. I don't know if you want to, you want to play it first and then talk about it. Or? Uh, I'm going to first introduce um, what is going on here. <coughs> the basic idea of um, that instrument was that uh, in 80, 1980, uh, I would like to use a usual object as a musical instrument to uh, make a contradiction with the uh, music concrete in France that uh, most of the composers they use an uh, uh, objet sonore as just to make sound. So the purpose was to create an orchestra of objects. And so I wrote the score, and uh, that was done in 1880 by uh, Les Percussions Strasbourg. And um, then, as uh, first it was, uh, like they called, uh, a ready-made sound, a musical ready-made. So I started to perform um, by myself in a duet in the 80s. So it was two uh, two lamp players, like we call, and uh, lamp players. Lamp players, yeah. yeah. And the name of the instrument is Archie Sonic Lamp. It's um, and uh, so the the, the, the lamp starts to evolve and um, put more uh, strings, rubber strings become very very complicated. I put the uh, because the contact microphone takes the vibration of the material. And uh, it's like a microscope, so uh, the, 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 the PA was quite huge, so it's the first time that uh, I'm going to play this so small one. First <laughs> And uh, <laughs> It's not the size that counts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the purpose was to also that uh, because of the, of the contact microphone, make acoustic electronics, so we, could, we had the plug with a transforming sound in real time, with, for example, the Geraint tools or all the stuff of with computer music, and spatialization in 3D space. And um, so the duo started, <coughs> and I was playing solo uh, with computers, and I stopped in 2007 because of... <laughs> I'm fortunate to have you here. <laughs>
make <coughs> to continue the idea of uh, the open score from the composer of uh, the 60s and the 80s. That uh, uh, on the score there is uh, more than 90 cells that can be played on the on the lamp, and uh, that articulation of the music is made by the rules, game rules. So, for example, the simplest one is make the sound the most beautiful sound. Of course, it's totally, totally subjective, mm -hmm. but it makes a reaction, and everybody in the orchestra of lamp, of concert of, of lamp, try to play the, the most beautiful sound. And there is a, a judge that says, oh, this one, or the public can be the judge. It's something very fun. Like, uh, it was not just once, yeah. but peace, yeah. unfortunately. Unfortunately. Here, use notation of some kind, written notation of some kind, any kind of written notation of music. Okay, so, yes. Proud, you can be proud of that. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's not very good, but, you know, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to look at something a little bit more conventional. There's so much discussion at this whole festival of kind of novel instrument, uh, novel interfaces and gestural interfaces. And this is a gestural interface, I suppose, of, short, uh, of sorts. It's lots of knobs, right? Tell us about yourself. It's lots of knobs, and um, actually it's an instrument designed by uh, my friend Roparda, who's just walking up here, and he's going to do all the talking today. So I'm just sitting here to play those instruments. I'm blessed with these instruments, which range from prototypes to stuff that he produced and sells these days. And they have knob interfaces, but also interfaces like antennas, or uh, these are LDRs, which are light detecting resistors, which can, can control the instrument. We'll hear that in a minute, but now I pass it on to Rob to talk about the stuff. Clear. Here we go. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Rob Wardijk, and uh, I'm a designer of uh, electronic music instruments. I'm really proud to uh, present uh, Joker Lies, who is uh, probably one of the foremost performers of uh, electronic music instruments in the world. <laughs> and I also would like to introduce uh, Richard, who is uh, my, uh, my uh, partner in business. And uh, when it comes to when we need real brilliance, then he's our secret weapon. Uh, here's a couple of stuff that, uh, that I uh, built. Uh, normally I build all this big stuff that is, uh, I build it for other people and, uh, and sell that. But of course it's also interesting to make uh, the more uh, uh, fun stuff. And uh, a couple of years ago, Joker and me, we had this discussion about uh, uh, circuit bending and circuit bending targets, and then suddenly we came up with the idea, why not design a, an instrument that is already bent by design? And uh, so, uh, we came up with that. And uh, maybe you can play a little bit. <coughs> 